is here at the miracle of the 1955 General Motors Motorola. Go on, enjoy yourselves. Look around at the new dream cars built to test new ideas and your reactions to them. The way you look at this LaSalle second will help build tomorrow's cars. Perhaps you dream about a low, sleek car like the Biscayne. The way you look at it can put some of its features on cars of the future. A gown of wide, multi-tone stripes by Sophie of Saks Fifth Avenue seems to go hand in glove with its contoured styling. The flare of a sports car may excite you, so you might go for the Stratostar. And there's room for the family to share the excitement in this six-passenger hardtop. Its fresh appeal inspired this strapless gown of white satin top and a skirt of silvery gray gauze. Maybe you look ahead to a dream car like the Delta, with new things like its brushed aluminum roof and its dual fuel tanks. If driving in the open stirs your imagination, the Wildcat 3rd is for you. It's bold, clean line. with their promise of increased performance and greater economy. Last year, we looked at you looking at a dream hardtop. You liked it. And here is the production model, a four-door with no center column. And because last year you endorsed it so heartily, all this year's cars have another pioneering achievement, the distinctive panoramic windshield. You approved of the years ahead station wagon styling with narrow slanting pillars and imaginative use of glass that led to the Nomad and the Safari, two of this year's production cars. Your ideas help fashion the Mulberry Street is pretty quiet. But you should have seen all the excitement the day Bob Jordan sprung his big surprise hey, on the neighborhood. Great. Nobody had ever seen anything quite like this newest, new kind of Ford. The Skyliner, the world's only hideaway hardtop. Naturally, everyone wanted to see how it worked. And just as naturally, Bob wanted to show them. He pulled the control lever, and the magic started. First, the rear deck lid swung up. All steel top automatically began to rise. Then the forward panel folded under. The top continued to move back and down 
and finally descended smoothly into the trunk. You saw it happen, from an all-steel hardtop to a wide-open convertible in less than a minute. But do you think this crowd was satisfied? Hey, do it again, Bob. Please put the top back up. And Bob obliged. He knows that the mechanism that operates this retractable top will take all the hard use he can give it, which means he can show it off to his friends all he likes. Ford engineers have tested this car by putting the top up and down thousands of times, the equivalent of 10 years of normal use without a mechanical failure. This steel top is plenty rugged, too, and weather tight. There, the last step. Set screws lock the roof and deck lid down securely, and it's a snug and beautiful hard top again. This is another example of Ford's advanced engineering, another Ford first. Ask your Ford dealer about the new Ford Skyliner, the world's only hideaway hard top. Across the nation this week, folks everywhere are getting their first ride in the beautiful new 1952 DeSoto. Look at those big wide doors and see how roomy this 1952 DeSoto is. Inside, you sit naturally. You relax in seats that are chair high. Yes, the 1952 DeSoto brings you a whole host of wonderful features. Features like Oroflow shock absorbers, to help give you one of the smoothest rides you've ever known. Waterproof ignition, to give you sure starts even in the dampest weather. To protect your family in case of blowouts. Famous safety rim wheels. The new, the 1952 DeSoto. It's designed for you and your budget too. See the new 1952 DeSoto. know you've arrived when you drive up in the 1958 Edsel, the car that's truly new from nameplate to taillights. New from the front. New from the side. New from the rear. Only Edsel has the sleek, clean line design that sets it apart from the look-alike cars. And it combines new looks with the newest V8 engine in the world, the big new Edsel 400, and the power-packed Edsel 475. It is unlikely you have ever driven a car with so much real, usable power as the Edsel. And with Edsel's exclusive Teletouch drive, you drive more safely, more easily than you ever have before, because both hands can stay at the wheel while the Edsel shifts electrically. There's even the added luxury of new Edsel air suspension that's just like riding on air, because you are. And remember, of all the medium-priced cars, car for car, across the board, the 1958 Edsel is the one that's new and the lowest price, too. It's the response to the new 1954 Lincoln at dealers' showrooms all over the nation. People viewing this new 1954 Lincoln are showing unusual interest in this latest version of Lincoln, the one fine car designed for modern living. A big reason for this enthusiasm is Lincoln's fresh new beauty, reflected in this new grille and hood ensemble, emphasizing its lower, wider, functional beauty. Chrome trim is used carefully, and most important, sparingly, just enough to accentuate the long, low silhouette of the car itself. New style notes include a completely new rear bumper, plus an entirely new taillight assembly with backup lights built in. Those who have seen the new 1954 Lincoln for the first time showed a great deal of enthusiasm for the totally new interior patterns designed to reflect modern living as you find it in the modern home. Fabrics range from a silver thread nylon frise through other nylons and broadcloths to the finest grade of leathers in just about any colors one could name. But perhaps the greatest excitement of all was shown by those people who took the new Lincoln out on the road. For this year, Lincoln owners will experience a new driving thrill with Lincoln's improved engine. This overhead valve V8 now incorporates a new type four-barrel carburetor that provides still more responsive power when you need it. 
Other mechanical changes in the new 1954 Lincoln include larger brakes for an even greater degree of safety. Lincoln dealers everywhere are extending a cordial invitation to stop in and drive either the new 1954 Lincoln or the Lincoln Capri. The one fine car designed for modern living, completely powered for modern driving. You can't blame her for hurrying when you know those Chevy cars. The 1963 Impal Sport Coupe, for example. Notice the new flash, new flair, new fineness. A lovely car. But that's not hers. The 1963 Corvair Monza for excitement. This one isn't hers either. We should have known. A Chevy 2, of course. Exciting as it looks and easier to look after in 63. Bright girl. Wow, a Chevrolet Corvette Stingray Sport Coupe. See Chevrolet's four entirely different kinds of exciting new cars for 63. Come to the Go Show at your Chevrolet dealers now. Say, old Pete's sure in a good mood. Oh, you beautiful dreamboat, you. Hi, Pete. You look mighty pleased with yourself. Well, Bob, I ought to be. I've just made the best deal of my life. Would it have anything to do with this new Olds 88? <laughs> it sure would. Old Pete finally wised up. He finally saw the light. Why, do you know that I've been paying as much for those little so-called low-priced jobs as I paid for this Olds 88? I believe it. Well, this time, I played it smart. I put my dough on Oldsmobile, and just look how much more I got for my money. To start with, the best-looking car on the road. Look at those lines. And this new bumper and grill. Well, there you've got rugged protection and real style. And this rocket engine. Say, I never knew a car could perform like this one. I know I'm telling you all this. You sell Oldsmobiles. Yes, Pete, but uh, it's always nice to hear from a satisfied customer. Well, you've got one here, and the next time you get a chance, you tell a few people what a terrific deal old Pete got from Oldsmobile. I certainly will. Well, there you are. Why don't you stop by your Oldsmobile dealer? Discover how easy it is to drive home in an Oldsmobile 88 of your very own. It's been a spontaneous thing, too, sort of contagious. <laughs> One fellow drives a Mercury home, and pretty soon he has a half a dozen neighbors around, all talking about dream car design. Well, Jack, suppose we take a look at that dream car design. Well, there's a beautiful example right over there. Oh, oh the new convertible cruiser, and it is a real beauty. So that's the model that will do the actual pace car honors next Memorial Day. That's right, Ed. We've chosen the convertible cruiser because it most typifies Mercury's dream car design. <laughs> it's really a knockout. Well, it has the same straightness of lines, uh, the feeling of bigness and mass without bulk. Mm -hmm. And as you pointed out, Ed, this basic styling found on all Mercury's has captured the imagination of car buyers everywhere. In fact, in order to meet this tremendous buyer demand, we've had to increase our production by 40% for the months of January and February. Actually, right now, we have more people at work building Mercury's than at any time in the history of the Mercury car.
see and drive the car with the look, the feel, the power of success. The 56 Dodge, value leader of the forward look. These are the Thunderbirds, United States Air Force Jet Demonstration Team. Their F-100 Super Sabres are powered by Pratt & Whitney J-57 engines. Manufactured by the Ford Aircraft Engine Division. Now, here are three more super performers from Ford. The 1957 Ford Thunderbird. You're looking at the latest version of America's most talked about car. For 57, Ford has shaped the classic Thunderbird profile into a completely fresh, completely distinctive style all its own. New swept back tail fins and the longer rear deck add elegance to its lower than ever line. These new dimensions give you more luggage room, too. Even with a spare tire inside, you get more luggage space than last year. You know, there's not another car like it in America. It's powered by a big 312 cubic inch V8 engine with twin four-barrel carburetors. You'll have to look far to find a performer that can match this one. You are about to know the thrill of seeing that which has never been seen before. You are about to enter a beautiful, exciting, wonderful new world. The world of 1960. For the first time in history, you'll see... Not one. Not two. new kinds of Ford cars for 1960. A wonderful new world of Fords. First, representing the 1960 Fords, the finest Fords of a lifetime, the magnificent new Galaxy, beautiful from any point of view, worth more from every point of value. The 1960 Fords open up a whole wonderful new world of styling elegance and built for people comfort. And now, the world's most wanted car. Thunderbird, the finest of fine cars, the last word in wish it were mine cars, the dream car of the wonderful new world of Fords. The 1960 Thunderbird. Finally, the car everyone's been waiting to see. The new size Ford, the Falcon. Here's full comfort for six adults in a car that'll give you up to 30 miles a gallon. A new size car with a new size price. It's the easiest car in the world to own. The Ford Falcon. You can see these cars at your Ford dealer showroom now. The Falcon. Thunderbird, and the 1964. Good evening. I'm John Larkin, speaking for your Kaiser Fraser dealer. Tonight, I'm going to take you back over one of the most thrilling experiences I've ever had. I'm going to show you what happened when we literally tried to tear the Henry J to pieces. We put the Henry J through some of the toughest, roughest tests in the world. The first test we made was down the Buck and Bronco Road. One mile of concrete washboard, an endless chain of brutal ruts built to shake the body bolts out of any ordinary car. Now, I'd seen the Henry J take some mighty rough country roads, but never anything like this. She's hitting 15 jolting bumps every single second, and I never would have believed it if I hadn't watched the wheels. Up and down, they bounce like rubber balls. And yet, the Henry J's unique spring and frame construction soaked up the shock and gave a smooth level flight ride. Even a slow motion picture doesn't reveal a single jolt or jounce. And how was the driver enjoying it? Well, he opened the door and I was amazed when I saw the steering wheel. It was perfectly steady, completely under control, no shock, no road wander, no wiggle. Every inch of the way, the Henry J took this buck and bronco road as though it were a smooth, new superhighway. And now that you've seen what I saw, I think you'll agree that the Henry J is one of the world's toughest cars. Next week, I'll tell you about another dramatic test. And remember, the Henry J is the smartest, the thriftiest, full-size car you can buy. 
with up to 30 to 35 miles a gallon, with monthly payments as low as $49. So tomorrow, go in and see your Kaiser Fraser dealer. Start driving the smart, new Henry J right away. In the course of a year's driving, you naturally run into a lot of different road conditions, and not all of them are ideal. For example, here's the kind of driving that we all enjoy. We're on a wide, smooth highway. You're really rolling along with never a bump. But now and then, you're likely to encounter a stretch like this. And believe me, the going can get rough. So, Chrysler Corporation engineers decided to find a way to give you a ride that will be smooth on rough, rutted roads as well as on a boulevard. And here is the secret. This is an AuraFlow shock absorber. It was developed by Chrysler Corporation exclusively for Chrysler Corporation cars. And it may look just like an ordinary shock absorber, but it definitely is not. For this unique AuraFlow shock absorber is built to absorb more pounding and bouncing on a rough road like this than any other passenger car shock absorber in the industry. The AuraFlow shock absorber literally soaks up the bumps, keeping your car level on its course and the ride soft, smooth, and beautifully controlled. We call it the Boulevard Ride, and believe me, that's the right name for it. You get a ride that's as soft and smooth as a feather bed. And here's a tiny tot enjoying to the full the ride of her mother's new Chrysler Corporation car. And there you have it, the smoothest, easiest riding cars on the road today, thanks to the only shock absorbers in the industry that give you a real boulevard ride. A convenient location. That's one reason many car owners give for selecting a particular service station. That's a pretty good reason, but let's always remember one thing. Our best gasoline customers are the ones who are on the move a lot. And for people on the move, a convenience station is not always the best station. Take the Adams family, for instance, who live just a couple of blocks from this station. There's Mr. Adams, just about to leave for work. He does this every day, five days a week, and just about the same time. Hmm. 7 o'clock, he leaves pretty early. This morning, and at least twice a week, he needs gas. He's got to stop someplace. Now, here's the station nearest to his home. It's close, all right, but it's closed. Mr. Adams passes it up. This ought to be convenient for him, right on his way. But it's not for Mr. Adams. The point is that Mr. Adams has traveled a long way from home to buy gas. He wanted more than convenience. There must be a reason. Have you noticed the Sinclair National Park ads, Marge? They're interesting. This one's all about Washington's home at Mount Vernon. Maybe we should take that in on our next trip. I think I'll give one of their stations a try for gas, too. There are other ways of getting car owners interested in a certain brand. Here's one of the best. Word of mouth advertising. It's the truth, Pete. I actually get better performance. You don't say. Yeah, Sinclair's high test Power X, they call it. You ought to try it. A satisfied customer tells a friend. Millions of drivers are persuaded daily to try the Sinclair brand. And when it's brand that makes them pick a station, this emblem clearly shows them where to get it. At least, it should. The biggest reason that drivers pick a station for the first time is the dealer's influence in the community. What he does to reach people, okay. persuade them to do business with him. See you in about an hour. Okay, Carl. He has made his station known in the community. He has made himself liked in the community. This dealer doesn't wait for customers to come in. He goes out after them. And he does it in many ways. He gets out and meets more people personally. He has to eat anyway, so he might as well enjoy it and make more friends while he's at it. A little back scratching never hurts anybody. These fellows buy gas somewhere, and their friend Jones is in the business. Might as well trade with him. Here's another way he gets out. 
He makes sure that all of the people in the neighborhood of his station know him well and favorably. They know he's in business nearby, handy for gasoline and ready to take care of their car needs. This homeowner is worth a can of household oil or something equally inexpensive just for goodwill. He's never bought gas at the station. A friendly gesture like this will probably bring him in for the first time. Another good place to build a friendly reputation is with fellow retailers, even the barber. And why not? Talk about word of mouth advertising. This dealer always has Tony cut his hair. And uh, Tony isn't the quietest man in town. What's this? The calendar I gave him two weeks ago. Yeah, this would be a good place for a Sinclair calendar. Customers have nothing to do but stare at the wall and fight the mirrors or listen to Tony. Say, uh, Tony, he says, you wouldn't mind if I put up one of my calendars, would you? And you wouldn't mind telling your customers about me, would you? Come to think about it, he says to Tony, where do you buy your gas? That's a new motorabic Chevrolet. Best thing on wheels, as far as I'm concerned. Of course, I may be prejudiced. I work here on the Chevrolet assembly line. I put the finishing touches on these cars. Then they're headed straight for America's driveways. Look mighty good there, too. See, reminds me. The other day I met an old friend. Now, Charlie, that's my friend's name. He usually never talks much about cars. But ever since he drove my new Chevrolet, oh boy, Charlie talks just like one of our own engineers. New Turbofire V8's terrific. Can't beat that glide ride front suspension. And you know something? Charlie's 100% right. Why, just look at the way the new Chevrolet rides and handles. Like I say, I may be prejudiced. Get a hold of a motoramic Chevrolet and drive it yourself. What does the 1956 Chevrolet look like? That's the best kept secret of the year. Keeping it secret until Friday, November 4th, is the job of the men and women in scores of Chevrolet plants across the nation. Security checks are tightened. And as the 56 Chevrolet begins the journey to your dealer, it's security all the way, under canvas covers and behind sealed boxcar doors. In city after city, as dealers get the news that the 56 Chevrolet arrives soon, they too get ready to guard the secret until Friday, November 4th. Chevrolet for 56 is on its way to you right now. Its new beauty, new power, and new performance are secrets worth waiting to learn. So wait. Hi, Rex May here on the rail with some of the finest performers in America. In the lineup, here's the Lark hardtop, and we're going to show you how performance sets the pace in the Lark. Watch that new Lark Skybolt 6 go. <laughs> There's superior acceleration from 0 to 40 in seconds. Fast pickup for the first time in a six-cylinder compact. Here are more Lark engineering features. The new Lark oval steering wheel and new Lark steering system give you smooth rides at any speed. The Lark's big 15-inch wheels turn fewer revolutions so you get longer tire life. The Lark also gives you sure-footed cornering like this. Need passing power? You've got that too with the Skybolt 6. For extra safety, there's extra power from 40 to 65 thanks to the Lark's new Ram induction manifold. For even greater performance, there's the national economy champion Lark V8. V8 or Skybolt 6, the Lark's the compact that's easy on your pocketbook. V8 or Skybolt 6, first in class for style, across the board payoff in performance and economy. The Lark in seven models. So take a demonstration drive. Remember, you have to drive the Lark to believe it. The Lark by Studebaker. The first place we visited was the Capitol, surely one of the most thrilling sights in the world. It's the focal point of the city, and right over there where you see the stands, the inauguration itself will take place. And the parade tomorrow begins right here, and so, so will we. Although it was very cold, 
I had the top down on my long, low Lincoln convertible, so I was riding just as the people will be riding in the parade tomorrow. I drove away from the Capitol toward the stately Supreme Court building. And right away, my lovely Lincoln attracted as much attention as if it were leading a parade. I followed the stands along Pennsylvania Avenue, past the National Gallery of Art, where you can see some of the world's finest art treasures, and then by the Washington Monument. And I thought how perfectly my new Lincoln fitted into the beautiful setting of this lovely city. It started to snow, so I put the top up and drove to where the parade will end, at the White House, where the president, the vice president, and their guests will review the parade. As I started back, I was reminded of something I'd noticed that from the number of Lincolns in Washington, more and more of the most important people were driving the finest car, Lincoln. For example, later that evening when I arrived at the Carlton Hotel for dinner with friends, the doorman complimented me on my lovely Lincoln. Later he told me that with all the social activities in Washington these days, he had noticed so many more people were arriving in new Lincoln. And as I was standing with my friends at the entrance of the hotel, I saw evidence of this myself. I was convinced, as I am wherever I go, that Lincoln stands out the finest in the fine car field. This is the Continental Mark II. Big and impressive, but with no bulk, no unnecessary ornamentation. Just the sweep of wonderfully clean lines. Lines that are distinctive from the slim top to that famous Continental rear deck. Lines that have a leanness, a lowness, Lines that give the Continental Mark II the feeling of motion and the poised beauty of a classic. In its engineering, every Continental asserts with final authority that America can produce quality second to none. And because this is a limited edition car, each Continental can be constructed with meticulous care, painstaking attention, with the most exacting craftsmanship. In the interior, for example, rich fabrics and imported leathers. In the finish, multiple coats of hand-rubbed lacquer. And when you drive the Continental Mark II, you know this car will do anything you ask of it. And do it so well, you feel it's almost a part of you. And you feel a great sense of security, too, of confidence. The Continental Mark II is smooth and quiet always. And on the open road, like riding with the wind. The Continental Mark II. It has no equal. It is simply and beautifully America's finest car. There's the 1958 Lincoln. Clean, aristocratic, modern styling, truly distinctive. There's the Cadillac. The styling concept is completely different, old-fashioned. Hardly distinguishable from the rest of the General Motors line. And here's the Lincoln from the front. Again, clean-lined, modern and distinctive. But look at the Cadillac in comparison. Fussy and very similar to other General Motors cars. Here's the Lincoln from the rear. And the Cadillac. From whatever angle you view these cars, Lincoln's styling is obviously more distinctive. What do you think? Well, what I think isn't the point. What does the buyer think? Let me show you this report. Here are the 1958 car owner's opinions as to which car is most attractive. The Lincoln vote is 94%. Cadillac, only 55%. Meaning that nearly half the Cadillac owners are doubtful of the new car they purchased. We'll start right here with a look inside the Lincoln. The interior, beautifully appointed. And notice the roominess. You see, there's the luxurious spaciousness people expect in a fine car. The Cadillac, definitely smaller. In the dimensions that actually count. Watch this. You see, those measuring poles fit between the Lincoln windows at shoulder height. Now watch.
You see how far the poles protrude on the Cadillac? That shows how much more shoulder room the Lincoln has. In the front, four inches more shoulder room. In the rear, six and a half inches more shoulder room in the Lincoln. All right. What about craftsmanship and body construction? We've got them beat on that, too. Here's the Lincoln body, featuring the new, modern, uniframe design. As you probably noticed, the new Lincoln body is built in a completely new manufacturing facility, clean, modern, with all new tooling and more efficient quality control techniques. This again shows Lincoln out in front of Cadillac, which is still being built in an old, antiquated plant. It all adds up to superior quality and craftsmanship for the Lincoln buyer. See what I mean? Two Chryslers have been making history. First, there's the Chrysler 300, pace car that led the pack at the Indianapolis 500 on Memorial Day. Pace setter that won three out of the five major sports car rallies that entered. Daniel Boone Rally, Abominable Snow Rally, Virginia Reel Rally, the Chrysler 300 with deep bucket seat comfort, a sports car interior and performance few others can match. Then there's the pace setting Chrysler Newport, the economical way to take the big, beautiful step ahead. Every bit a full-size Chrysler. This Newport sedan is the biggest value in the medium price field. There are 18 options for interior trim, big, easy to enter doors, lots of legroom in both front and rear. A big car in every way. See and drive both of these beautiful face centers. Economical Chrysler Newport. Sports bred Chrysler 300 at your Chrysler dealers now. Ambassador, the now car that gives you the rich driving experience of the red carpet ride. Ambassador, full-size luxury created for today with road cushioning suspension, velvet tone performance, the luxury of the red carpet ride. Ambassador, an uncompromising selection of automobiles with the red carpet ride. Priced for people who want their luxury now. Every year, Motor Trend magazine evaluates all the new cars before naming its Car of the Year. They look for outstanding styling, great engineering, and ingenuity of design. This year, Motor Trend gave Pontiac the Car of the Year award for the fourth time. In fact, Pontiac's the only car maker ever to receive the Car of the Year award four times. We suspect the Bumper of the Year had a lot to do with it. Seems like everything those Pontiac engineers touch turns to great. Take some steep. Forge it with skill. Break a lift with style. Make an automobile. Folks, in the making of an automobile, one special factor is far more important than any other. That factor is engineering know-how. The kind of engineering know-how that sets Dodge far apart in its field. And here's what I mean. Only Dodge engineering brings you that new look of lowness combined with big, wide door openings and stretch out roominess inside. Only Dodge engineering brings you seats that swing out to meet you, swing in to seat you. 
Only Dodge Engineering brings you the ease of push-button torque flight drive, the greatness of torsion air ride, the safety of total contact brakes. Folks, only Dodge Engineering know-how brings you so many finer features and exclusive advantages. And there's just one way for you to find out how much these features mean to you. And that's to slide behind the wheel of a 59 Dodge yourself. This week for sure. Hello, I'm Truman Bradley speaking for your local Chrysler dealer. And tonight I have a real challenge for you because we believe that 15 minutes here can change 15 years of car buying habits. And that's especially true if you now drive one of the two major competitive cars in Chrysler's price class. In fact, every day more and more folks just like you are making the big switch to the exciting new 56 Chrysler. But let's spend a Saturday morning with the owners of this sleek new power style Chrysler and I'll show you some of the reasons why. Notice how your neighbors look with admiration as you drive out in your new Chrysler. And no wonder, from the rakish flare of its new flight-swept rear fenders, right up to its bold but elegant new front styling, the new Power Style Chrysler emphasizes the forward look of power in motion. Looks like it's still moving, even when it stops. Some design. And now let's go with the missus for the Saturday shopping. Well, here's a young man who's mighty impressed. Wow, another new Chrysler. That rear end looks just like a jet plane. He knows what he's talking about. That Chrysler engineers have adapted the most modern jet plane designs in this new Chrysler. Everywhere people notice you. I'll park it for you. Get a real kick out of that push button driving. What a car. Well, now you begin to understand some of the reasons why America's most smartly different car is being seen in all the smartest places. But slip behind the wheel of a new power style Chrysler and get the whole story for yourself. Just be prepared to make the switch to Chrysler because I promise you, 15 minutes here can change 15 years of habits. Why not stop in at your Chrysler dealers tomorrow? Take the keys and see what driving pleasure really is. Behind these walls is Ford Motor Company's Dearborn, Michigan Proving Grounds, where some of the auto industry's most tightly guarded secrets are developed. New engineering features are given strenuous and continuous testing, and if they survive, they may be installed in market research cars and driven by typical auto owners to sample public opinion. This Mercury Park Lane convertible is being used to test average driver attitudes to an experimental steering control system which could replace the familiar steering wheel. Called the wrist twist steering control, it was developed for Mercury by ex-missile engineer Bob Rumpf, who is ready to send the car off with a driver who promises to be about as non-technical as they come. Getting in is easy enough. Elimination of the steering wheel means additional room that is mighty important on entry and exit. Although the appearance may seem startling at first, the wrist twist steering control takes very little practice to get used to. Two five-inch rings turn simultaneously and are manipulated easily with one or both hands. A comfort feature of the wrist twist system is the addition of armrests for both controls. Since only a light touch is necessary, the arms may rest solidly on the supports, just like in your favorite easy chair. Once on the road, other advantages are noticeable. The most obvious is improved visibility both of the instrument panel and the road ahead. Most women will agree that parking is the most taxing part of driving, but not with the wrist twist. Still relaxed and comfortable, she literally dials her way into this tight spot. The test trip is over, and she takes her last look at the wrist twist controls. Or is it? You never can tell what surprises automakers may have in store just around the corner. Spring weather across the nation has beckoned millions of families to the open road, where memories of a long, tedious winter are quickly wafted away by generous doses of warm, fragrant air. And as anyone knows, fresh country air generates king-sized appetites, which seem to grow all out of proportion at the sight of a country store. It can be the source of all kinds of delicious and different regional foods, 
Local breads, meats, and fresh fruits you can't ordinarily get at home. This kind of spur-of-the-moment shopping and eating along the way is the subject of a new cookbook which has just been published, and it's filled with recipes and suggestions on how to enhance the pleasure of your trips with an impromptu roadside meal. As an example, here's a couple vacationing in their pickup camper who've a yen for an outdoor broiled steak. You'll enjoy your trip a lot more by joining the ever-growing band of smart travelers who have equipped themselves to serve meals out of doors amidst the pleasant surroundings of the countryside. It's happening now. At Oldsmobile dealerships all over the country. Your Oldsmobile dealer is ready for spring. Set for the wonderful motoring season ahead with a great series of surprise values. You'll be especially interested in Oldsmobile's dollar-saving Dynamic 88. The value buy of this or any year. What's your measure of appeal in a new car? Styling? This Dynamic 88 has it. The high style, crisp look of fashion line design. Comfort? Again, the Dynamic 88 measures up with wonderful ease of entry and exit with chair height seats and deep foam cushioning. Maybe your measure of an automobile is performance. Look no further. This Dynamic 88 is a rocket Oldsmobile with more zing than ever. And you get all that rocket goal on regular gas. See your Oldsmobile quality dealer. People everywhere, by the thousands, more people than ever before, today are buying Mercury. Yes, everywhere, every day, more and more people are driving this car and buying this car. The 1950 Mercury, and with good reason, for Mercury has demonstrated that it's today's outstanding automobile value. The car that can take it across grinding desert sand. And up grueling mountain slopes. And still come out all-time sweepstakes winner in the famous Mobile Gas Grand Canyon Economy Run, America's number one economy car, Mercury. Mercury, the car that set the pace in this year's Indianapolis Speedway race. It's out ahead of all the rest. Out ahead for steady reserves of power. Out ahead for easy driving roadability. Out ahead of the rest for riding comfort. Ahead in all the things that mean a wonderful ride and a wonderful car. Mercury. And a Mercury like this awaits your inspection at your Mercury dealers now. See him. Go for a ride and you'll go for Mercury. You can probably remember when superficial features used to be added to the basic shape of a car in an attempt to suggest a feeling of movement, such as this radiator ornament, for instance. Now, in the 1955 Ford, the feeling of motion has been built right into the basic shape of the car itself. Let me show you specifically what I mean. Notice how the line of the car flows from front to rear in an almost imperceptible curve, and how the front fenders, the reach of the visored headlights, and the drawn-out taillights extend this smooth, unbroken line. The lowered hood and the sweep of the all-round windshield blend into this line perfectly, adding to the lively feeling of motion in the overall appearance of this car. Now, when the design of a car expresses its function forcefully and imaginatively, of course, we derive more pleasure from owning and using it. The imaginative styling of the 1955 Ford is also evident in Ford's exciting new use of chrome and stainless steel trim, in Ford's fresh new colors and smart modern interiors. You're invited to come in and see the beautiful new 1955 Fords now at your Ford dealers. Here we've just had a complete teardown of a Ford and a Chevrolet. These are Ford parts, ready for comparison with the similar parts of a Chevrolet. Here they are, the Chevrolet parts. And our comparison is to cover all categories. Economy, comfort and convenience, performance, and safety. A big factor in safety is a driver's ability to see. The total of Chevrolet's glass area is this much bigger than a Ford's, 166 square inches. 
And remember, Ford's glass shortage is not confined to any one spot as we show here, but is distributed throughout all areas. Quite a difference, eh? Suppose I'd been sitting in a car like this several years ago and uh, I'd said to you, gee, wouldn't it be swell if steering were real easy like this, especially when you're standing still? Then if we and the practical designers and the hard-headed production men and the skeptical testers have done our jobs right, well then the factory men can turn yesterday's dream of effortless power steering into today's reality. <laughs> now that looked easy, didn't it? The men who designed this had fun. And the builders and the testers had fun. And while it's never going to take the place of the family car, I, for one, am going to have a lot of fun owning it. Now this could never have happened unless the world's largest manufacturer of automobiles had put its tremendous resources back of the job of designing and building a sports car to uphold American leadership in every field of transportation. They built her to handle like an angel with every ounce of weight right where it belongs for perfect balance. Clean and sleek and efficient looking and light and strong. And they kept the cockpit simple and practical. For the power plant, they started with the finest valve and head engine. Some extra special features of higher compression, triple side draft carburetors and dual exhaust give her 160 horsepower. Naturally, the automatic transmission quadrant's on the floor. That's in keeping with sports car tradition. In addition to the speedometer, there's a tachometer to measure engine revolutions. They call her Corvette, and she belongs to the highway, just for the sheer and simple joy of driving, for the open road and the country byway, for Mr. and Mrs. America in a carefree mood. And now, the completely new Corvette Stingray for 1963. There are two Stingray models. First, the Corvette Convertible, which has been restyled from grill to tailpipes to give it a look of speed to match the blazing performance of its big 327 cubic inch V8 engine. And second, the new Corvette Sport Coupe, the most exciting hardtop model you ever laid eyes on. It'll be a pace setter for years to come. With four engine choices, including fuel injection and power up to 360 horsepower, America's one true sports car continues to prove itself a top performer throughout the world. Of course, a lot of credit for Chevrolet's exciting performance can be traced to the Chevrolet Corvette. America's only authentic sports car. For the same team that developed the Corvette with all its razor-sharp reactions, developed all the new Chevrolets, including the best-selling, lowest-priced, full-sized convertible in America, the Chevrolet Impala Convertible. And like its Corvette kin, the Impala Convertible handles like a breeze. It steers feather light and true, and it responds instantly to any direction you might want to give it. As in all new Chevrolets, this Impala has full coil suspension at every wheel for a cloud soft ride over any road. Plus there's the exclusive craftsmanship of its body by Fisher and the brilliant modern design that won the applause of all America to make Chevy the year's best seller at a record breaking rate. So for loads of action, loads of room, and thrill-packed performance. Pick yourself a star from any one of Chevrolet's full cast of 18 new models for 1960. I want you to meet a great new star. The new 1953 Chevrolet. Isn't that a sight to take your breath away? Wouldn't that new beauty steal any show? I declare it looks a mile long. And see how low it is. And that beautiful, beautiful grill. Every detail is so perfectly designed, I just keep looking and looking at it. And I'll tell you something. You can look at it from every possible angle, and you'll still come up with the same answer. It's the best-looking car in the whole world. <laughs> there I go, getting carried away again. I could just talk about it all day. Every single part of the car, from the engine right down to the last nut and bolt, must be able to stand the gap. 
Yes, engineers call it reliability. And at Chevrolet, reliability is built into every car and truck through the industry's most complete and rugged system of testing, punishing, and analyzing. Now, see Chevrolet's reliability program at work. Here, just one of hundreds of exhausted tests. A 1961 Chevrolet door is opened and closed over 50,000 times and still working perfectly. A Chevrolet V8 engine running almost continuously at high speed for more than a week, day and night. The brutally punishing bump and shake rig helps engineers to find out what extreme vibration does to the car and its occupants. Yes, zest and pleasure and the thrill of action roll right along with a sports-minded customer in the new Corvair Monza Spider. That same spirit is here, too, in the Chevrolet Impala and throughout the entire line of Chevrolet cars and trucks. For all Chevrolet products for 1962, share the Spider's mood of enjoyment and satisfaction. The same snappy scat up and go. You feel it in regular Chevrolet passenger cars, in the powerfully built Chevy 2, and in the dramatic and beautifully unique Corvette, the sporty stand-up-and-go sports car that passes and surpasses anything in its class. These young people nowadays, they're great. They've got their own music, their own way of looking at things. They've got their own car, too. Camaro by Chevrolet, with command performance, as new as the new generation itself. Camaro is now, like this convertible rally sport version, with wide, wide stance and big car engines you can specify. This standard Camaro Sport Coupe is just the right car for the new generation that's starting to worry about the cost of the new, new generation. Sometimes I envy them, but not when I'm in my SS350 Rally Sport. Does that make me part of the new generation? Try a Camaro. Hi, I'm Teen Angel. You probably heard about what happened to me and my short back in 57. Well, ever since then, I've been haunting this here mall shop because it's where I used to hang out, you know? That used to be my booth right there, where I'd sit all day drinking colas with Betty Lou. How well that car steers depends, for one thing, on how well balanced it is. And what does an upside-down bottle have to do with a car's balance? Plenty. Watch. Didn't take much to knock it over, did it? It's called weight distribution. Every year, more and more safety has been built into the cars we drive, and many of the driving risks we once considered unavoidable are now almost completely eliminated. High-level ventilation, automatic signals for stopping and turning, 11-inch brake drums, and the modern anti-dive suspension system that brings the car to a smooth stop like this. On a highway or a road along a levee, performance is sweeter, nothing can beat her, life is completer in a Chevrolet.